The doors are opening. Based here in the UK, currently, actually, on yes, yeah, so you'll see them come out. And there'll be the national anthems played, and then President Trump will be invited to inspect the guard uh, there. So this is a very formal moment. It's celebrating the ties between the two countries. And uh, it's particularly about military ties, this visit, showing that joint security and joint military is a way ahead, something we can all agree on, away from all of the horrible politics and uh, perhaps those comments about Meghan Markle as well. This is about two countries coming together, shoulder to shoulder, two heads of state. Because the flag, can you use the flag rocking you or not?
We've been watching uh, President Trump and the Prince of Wales reviewing uh, the Grenadier Guards outside Buckingham Palace. You've been listening to U.S. military songs, as Max Foster has pointed out. This is really about the military bonds between the two nations. And Max, just a couple of things here that are notable. Number one, people will remember that one year ago in July of 2018, when they reviewed the troops, it was President Trump with Queen Elizabeth. This time, he's doing it with the Prince of Wales. Is there significance in that, Max? Well, I suspect the Queen might have got a little involved here uh, on behalf of President Trump, because by allowing Prince Charles to take the president forward, uh, there's a very clear seniority line there. So President of the United States would obviously be senior to the Prince of Wales, so he would go first. There wouldn't be the confusion that we had last time where he didn't know whether he should go before the Queen. So I suspect the Queen would have been involved in that decision to let the Prince of Wales host him. Also, you know, it's quite unusual, perhaps, that the president would speak to members of the Guard, but you can see the military, the senior member of the Guard, they're introducing him to members of the Guard, and that's because what they're trying to do here is really celebrate those U.S. ties, and there are several individuals within this troop who have U.S. ties. So the tallest on parade there is someone called uh, Joshua Young Hastings. He's from the U.K., but he actually went to an American university on a football scholarship. We also have uh, Robert Spilling, who was born in St. Louis, Missouri, but has actually had a British father. He served in the American military, but also the British military. So very cleverly, they're accentuating the ties between the UK and the US and avoiding all of the divisiveness you were hearing about politically earlier in the program. That's so interesting, Max. It is so interesting that, I mean, you have been our fly on the wall to be able to not lip read, but certainly tell us what that exchange of pleasantries, the context for it. And I think that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's unusual for the guard to speak back. You know, the fact that President Trump is going up and asking them questions, they're probably not accustomed to that. I have to give him 10 out of 10 for that performance. This is a performance. This is part of ceremonial. These are pictures which will last forever. He did it with enthusiasm. He did it correctly. And uh, the Prince of Wales is actually very good in these situations to try to help people through. And by separating him from the Queen, he made, they, they actually made it very easy. But do not be mistaken. The Queen is behind all of these decisions and is in utter control of this entire schedule. And Max, we are we'll now get the British We're... National Anthem, I understand. Okay. if you're with us still. Max, one person we're not seeing today is Prince Philip, and there's a reason for that, correct? Yeah, he's, he's retired from official duties. He's 97, so he's stepped back completely. And actually, these are the moments where she probably misses him most. He's an expert in military protocols and in military history, and he would normally have taken the president along. Um, so he's uh, actually greatly missed in these moments. But uh, gradually, as time moves on, she's uh, getting more used to this role, and Prince Charles actually is stepping in as her primary consort in these situations.